There we go. Hello. Welcome back to our Tuesday live event here. This is our Q&A for all of you who are um, joining us. Let's turn this down so it's not so loud and blaring in your ears. There we go. Cool. Well, thank you for being here. This is October 8th. It's Tuesday. Um, we're talking about a few different things. We're talking about scaling loads, how to do that. Um, we're also discussing a um, couple of contests that we've got coming on here, which is always fun. We love the contests. And, oh, there we go, that'll help. Okay, now you can see me. Now you can see and hear me, right? <laughs> if you can, please just give me a thumbs up. Or actually what would be best is if you just leave your, your name and where you're at, and then I can answer some of your questions for you. Hello, hi, Bobson from Orlando, Florida. Thanks for joining us. So again, we're talking about how to scale loads, scaling your loads properly. Um, and then of course, we'll be talking a few about some of the, the contests that we've got go coming up here. We also want to avoid some of the slips and falls that start to begin this time of season or this time of year, this season, and uh, we're gonna avoid those. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what to do to, to keep yourself planted well on the ground and of course some of the different uh, available positions that we've got available hey brad how are you bradley matthews iowa good deal so you can you're here um as always we've got a chat going alongside here anna will be helping to maintain all of that and make sure that we're answering questions along the way so this you know, I, I am sharing some information here with you, but in all reality, this is for you. So if you have questions, interrupt me, ask your questions. Let's get those answered right away um, because I am imagining if you have the questions, so does somebody else. So um, yes, ask away. Don't, don't let that hesitate yourself. Um, if you want to talk to one of the recruiters directly, you can actually contact them at the number here, 888-668-0698. Uh, Again, that's uh, our recruiting number. You can reach them. And then, of course, you can apply online at drivedecker.com. And we, you can always reach us on Facebook, facebook.com backslash DTL Inc. I'm just throwing addresses here to you, so I'm hoping you're right now real quick. No. <laughs> but you can always contact us at Facebook on our Facebook channel, DTL Inc. And um, that way we can answer some questions for you there as well. But as always, get a hold of one of the recruiters and, and we can answer questions. So... Gilbert, how you doing, Gil? Houston, Texas. Excellent. So here we are. We're going to talk uh, about a few different things. Um, before we get too much into everything, I do want to mention um, this is our tarping tool contest that we've got going on. So I'm going to throw this out there right now while we're waiting for, for a few others to pop on. Um, but I want to let you know about our top tarping tool contest. Let's see if I can share it. There we go. It helps if I share the picture with you. Hey, Brad, uh, should I say Iowa for right now? Right now, does that mean you're moving or uh, you're in the midst of working? You're on the road. <laughs> so our tarping tool, this is obviously for flat betters. Um, looks like my screen is frozen here for a second, so bear with me. There we go. The, but this, the tarping tool is for our flat betters um, or for anybody really who's ever flat betted before and has had their own little tool that they've used we want to get something in the hands of all of our our flatbed drivers something that's really easy to use you know something that's user-friendly um, easy to store it's really durable but we want it to be lightweight at the same time so we, we want you know we want the best of all worlds here but this is a tarping tool contest uh, we want all of the submissions sent to marketing at deckermail.com so again that's marketing at deckermail.com and we'll put that here in there for you. Um, maybe deckermail.com, there you go. So marketing at deckermail.com, that's where you're putting your submissions for the tarping tool. All the submissions have to be in by November 29th. November 29th for those submissions. And um, also for information on that, um, again, we want, we want it to be really easy to work with. Um, I know that some of you guys have very complicated systems that you use, which is great, um, but we want something that's that's really easy um, and that we can basically mass produce and, or get lots of one for everybody. And that's gonna be uh, basically distributed to all of our flatbed drivers here at Decker. Um, 
the Tarpon Tool contest. Uh, we'll start announcing some of the prizes and, and whatnot down the road, but really it's recognition for um, the big part to me is uh, the recognition that you're gonna have your tarpy tool handed out to Minnie. And you might already, you might just use one that um, is already produced, already out there, uh, which is fine, which is great. We just wanna get a variety of different ones that we can try, see which one's gonna be the best, and then get the, that one out to everybody. Uh, I know a couple of our drivers, one in particular who has uh, created his own tarping tool uh, that's that works it's really efficient and um, that might be the winner who knows we just want to make sure that we we're getting submissions and so we're looking at all possibilities if you want to submit you can either take a photo um, but ideally a short video of you actually using it or a several clips several pictures of you using the tarping tool so that we can get you know the full full spectrum of it all so Bradley says you're on the road to Kansas oh but you're parked now you're, you're just, I'm hoping you're parked <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes, as a reminder, you know, all of these are available to you, but in reality, we do not want you watching, not in reality, but beyond reality, we don't want you watching this um, while you're driving. This is for your downtime only, and that way we can, you know, communicate back and forth. We're not adding any distractions. We're only creating value for, for you at this time. So, um, yes, good point, Brett. <laughs> all right. All right, so the submissions, again, that's marketing at deckermail.com. It can be a photo. It can be um, ideally at least a photo, but a photo or a video. Uh, the video would be the best of, of all, and then you can describe it throughout the video of, of how to use it and all that, all that stuff. You know, and as a reminder for uh, within the tarping or the flatbed um, divisions, all of our divisions, our company policy is you need to tarp the load. Tarp the load, unless your fleet manager says otherwise, just assume you're gonna tarp that sucker. Uh, we wanna make sure that uh, we don't have any issues with, uh, for our customers uh, with getting their, uh, you know, their, um, their goods in great shape when they arrives, all that good stuff. So there, that's what I wanted to go over, the tarping tool submission. Now that's just one of our games that we've got going on here. Um, but we do have a couple of other games that are in the midst of everything. Um, where did I put? There it is. Looky there. Okay. So let's see if I can get out of the way here. And share. Sound effects. Sound effects are free. There we go. <laughs> We're going to talk about our STEM metrics. We talked a little bit about this before. Um, if you're not familiar with what our STEM metrics is, is it's a, a number of surveys that we send out. We partner with STEM metrics and they send out the surveys on behalf of us. So you'll probably be getting um, information or a text, I guess, from a 574 number. And the 574 number is, um, that's the STEM metrics themselves. They're, so they're sending these out on behalf of us. And you'll be getting one if you are um, either a recent graduate of our orientation. Uh, so orientation is a week long. It's for those of you who are just coming aboard with Decker and um, basically your implementation, your um, into, into Decker itself. So we know that there's areas that we can improve on, whether it's orientation or training or um, communication for, um, between you and your fleet manager, you and safety or whoever. We know that there is more information that we could provide or we can always do better. But in order to know what areas we need to improve on the best, uh, ideally you'll be sharing that information with us. So um, yes, that's what you're being, that's what these surveys are for. And if you participate in the survey, it's only about five to seven minutes, you know, depending on the one that you're doing. Again, you've got one for orientation, you've got one for once you're here for uh, 14 days or so, and then once you're here for um, 45 days, and then we've got our annual survey as well. Now the annual one, uh, that's that's going on right now, and um, be honest with it, the annual one is more of a, a bigger, uh, it, it's definitely confidential, but it's a, a bigger 
spectrum of what we need to improve on or what are areas and what we can we can work on does that make sense it should hopefully it makes sense but like brad said be honest with it it doesn't help us if you're just going through you know when you're ranking something online and they're like oh hey here's a quiz just go ahead and and throw this information out and um just rate us on this or that would you use this again you know that type of quiz that you're getting or those little brief little surveys I don't want you to fill it out like that. I want you to be completely honest because there's, it really doesn't benefit you or us if you're not being honest with it because then we can't improve. I mean, it's just gonna go along as it is. And if we're doing a fantastic job, awesome, we'd love to hear that. But if there's areas we need to work on, we honestly need to know that. Um, there's, you know, there, everybody's got a little bit different uh, perspective on how well Decker runs or where areas that might need the improvement. And we need to hear them all because until we get it all, we won't know the full picture of it. So, yes, please be honest. Those of you who have filled out the survey are automatically entered into a drawing, and we have 27 total. This is week, is this week five, Anna? I think this is week five. So, we've had several winners already, and the winners for this week, okay, so let's, let's see if I can find my winners here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is it at? Winner winners. Oh, I don't even see it. Goodness gracious. Nope, I don't see it. So our winners, I'll look that up for you guys. Um, I know Jared was one of our winners for this week. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. But in order to win is you're just, you're getting a drawing. You're, you're putting your name in the drawing for filling out this survey, the Stayometric survey. And um, then we're gonna draw three names each week and the winner will at that point get either a $50 gift card to the Decker store, a $50 Walmart gift card, or a $50 Visa gift card. So we've got all of those options that you can, can win. And I think, I'm trying to remember if this is week four or five, but uh, we have we have several have had several winners already. We like to see those coming in. So let me get this over to you so that you can see my screen and who my winners are. Winna winna winna. Left screen. That's what I want. <laughs> there. You see it? There we go. There we go. We're alive and kicking now. Okay, so we've got Jared Dahlgren, who won the $50 Decker gift, gift card, uh, Decker store gift card, that's what I said. And then uh, Terry Salter, the $50 Visa gift card, and Joshua Hagen, the $50 Walmart gift card. There we go, those are our winners. I don't know what I did with that earlier, but we've got it. Rip roaring and ready to go now. Oh, and also, so those are our winners for the stay of metrics, but we've got more, we've got more stuff coming up. So um, you'll be staying tuned till some of the, the different, different contests that we have. We have a big contest that I want to talk about a little bit later. Um, it's big to me because it, it's, it's fast. You only have a couple of weeks to get it in, but we can have a whole lot of fun with it. And I know there's amazing photos out there that you can submit if you haven't already submitted them. So we want to see some of those. So yeah, it is week five. Okay, cool. So Anna actually has gone ahead and put on all of our weeks so far. Our winners for the Stayometrics drawings are, have been Kyle Dixon, Josh Vega, Felix Perez, Timothy Olden, Chad ha Hazelton, Johnny Cox, uh, Lyle Turville, Steve Alliger, Troy Jack, Keith Stuland, Kirby Goose, Cody Hager, and then of course the three for this week. Uh, Jared Dahlgren, Terry Salter, and Joshua Hagen. Yes, we love prizes. I love seeing the prizes. But yeah, they, I mean, again, it is, we're, we need to see um, honest answers. So if you could please take the five to seven minutes um, to fill out those surveys that would mu very much be appreciated. So um, what else do I have for you? Let's decrease this so I can actually see what your, any comments that are coming through. Again, if you have any questions and you wanna to talk to a recruiter, you can call them directly at 888-668-0698, or you can, of course, go to drivedecker.com. But uh, feel free to leave comments, questions in the, the chat there, and we will answer those as, as soon as possible. So also what's going on right now, um, the 
one of the main topics that we're hearing about is the hours of service proposal that's out there. And I know that for some of you, um, I've been told that, you know, the hours of service have been changed. I mean, I was getting calls left and right saying, oh, the hours of service have changed. You, can, you know, we can do this and we can do that. No, not yet. The hours of service have not changed yet. As of right now, it is only a proposal. And I think by, you know, I mean, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been getting those calls. So I think at this time, most people know that it is only uh, a proposal. But if you want to have any say on what the proposal, you know, what they, what they pass, I guess, then you need to get all of your submissions over to uh, regulations.gov. Oh, I kind of threw that right on top of it, didn't I? Regulations.gov is the website that I need you to, to um, actually post to. Right here. Um, and you're just, you're just putting your comments on, on the actual proposal itself, what, we've, you know, what they're proposing or what they've already gotten um, as a proposal. And so what those are is you're looking at um, allowing drivers to pause their 14 hour, their on duty clock for, an, for up to another three hours and then extend the sleeper berth options as well. And then there's gonna be flexibility or a proposed flexibility around the 30 minute break, allowing drivers to extend uh, the 13 hour on duty window for adverse weather conditions. So allowing, allowing up to a 13, up to a total of 13 hours for adverse weather. And then going from 12 to 14 hours um, for short haul. So for, for those of you who are uh, working with a short haul, um, it could be a 12 to 14 hour increase and then a radius of 100 to, or excuse me, yeah, 100 to 150 mile air miles for the short haul. So that's the proposal. Let's get that in front of you again here. There we go. Um, allow up to allow drivers to pause their 14 hour on duty clock for up to three hours and extend the sleeper berth options. Flexibility around the 30 minute break and allowing drivers to extend the 13 hour on duty window for adverse conditions. And expanding the on duty period for short haul drivers from 12 to 14 hours and extending the short haul radius from 100 air miles to 150 air miles. <laughs> hey, mud flap. So what answer, hopefully, yeah, good. So Brad said that that answered his question. Not sure what your question is, but awesome. I didn't even see it. I'm missing it, dang nabbit. Sorry about that. But good, I'm glad you got it answered. <laughs> All right. So those are the hours of service that's that's uh, kind of been in the news a lot. If you've been checking on Trucker News or anything like that, um, or any of those websites, you've probably seen that. But uh, doesn't you know your your comments aren't heard unless you put them on there. So regulations.gov uh, it doesn't do much to to gripe about something or to have an opinion about something if you're not heard on it. You know, and if nobody else feels the same. So definitely, definitely put that out there for you, okay? All right, so let's, hours of service, okay, cool. <laughs> let's talk about scaling loads, since that is one of the main subjects that we've got going on um, here today, We're talking about scaling loads. And I'm gonna just throw this right over my face here, so there you go, you see my arms moving, but. <laughs> How to scale a trailer load, or a tractor trailer. Um, you know, this is a, a subject that a, a lot of people miss during orientation. So whether it's during orientation or whether it's during um, school, uh, it's, it's often overlooked. The training itself for scaling your loads is often overlooked. And if it is addressed, a lot of times it's addressed just momentarily. And it's just real brief. It's not thorough enough, not, not enough hands-on actually doing it. So we want to uh, we want to take a few moments to go through how to scale your load or scale your tractor and trailer properly, scaling your load, whatever, and um, making sure that you're doing it safely so that you're not running into issues. And I know whether you're an experienced driver and you're still fumbling around with it um, or you're a new driver and you've got, you know, and you could use a little bit of advice or tips. Um, that, that's what we're going to address right now. So if you are an experienced tractor trailer driver and you have some great tips and suggestions for scaling your load, 
do not hesitate to put those in the chat. We would really, really appreciate it. I know that there's others out there that would really appreciate that information as well. So go ahead, put it in the chat if you have any suggestions um, and add on to what I've got to say or right over the top of what I've got to say. I'm cool with that. So, all right. So how to scale the, the tractor trailer. Before you even begin, lock the trailer brakes. So first and foremost, first and foremost, there we go, lock those trailer brakes. Make sure that they're set. Okay, and um, make sure, let's see if I can, you guys see that just fine. There we go. Okay, lock the trailer brakes. And then make sure that you're on a flat surface, you know, and that you're not on the scale itself. And then goal, you know the goal. We do this all the time. It's safety, safety, safety. Get out and look. Be sure to get out of the vehicle and visually check the distance that you have available. Make sure that you've got room, okay? And then release the slider pins. There we go. Release the slider pins, okay? With the, the trailer brakes still locked, remember we wanna keep those locked, release the slider pins underneath the trailer and then slowly back up and it's wheels locked so that the axles, um, the, so that the axles are, are sliding further under. Uh, underneath the trailer. Sliding the trailer wheels further under decreases the driver act or drive driver axle weight. There we go. Driver axle weight and increases the weight on the tandem axles. So generally the rule of thumb is about 250. I know everybody's a little bit different, but about 250 to 300 um, 300 pounds for the uh, for each of the little nodules. So 250 to 300, that's about what it's gonna adjust for your weight. And remember, the APU units that are on all of our trucks, that's gonna allow for another, or for a safe wiggle room of about 400. It's 405 pounds, um, our APUs, but you're gonna be able to, to allow for an extra 400 pounds on that. Some states 500, but 400 to be safe, okay? So again, when you're, when you're making the adjustments um, on the trailer, on the trailer, it's the, the slider, um, it's going to be about 250 to 50, 250 to about 300 pounds um, for each one of those. But make sure that you are on a flat surface so that you can do those, do that properly. Um, I know that a lot of times when you're wondering how to um, how to make those adjustments, when you're moving the weight back onto the tandems, onto the drives, you're going to have to back up. Okay, and then when you're moving the weights forward onto the tandems, and then obviously you're gonna pull forward up and hook to those nodules. So each little, not nodules, but into the holes. Okay, anybody have questions on that so far? Are we good so far? Yes, the Way My Truck Mobile that Anna has uh, posted there, that's a huge time saver. So as you know, obviously when you're, when you're weighing your trucks and whatnot, use that app. You can access the app just through, you know, by downloading the app itself, or you can access it through our Transflow, uh, Transflow mobile app as well, but you, you know, by logging in that way. But the Way My Truck mobile app is going to save you a lot of time. So use that whenever, whenever possible. Um, our, the, knowing what, our, what everything weighs and whatnot, you need about 30, You've got about 80,000 pounds that you're dealing with, right? And our trucks, you figure about 13,200. So I know it's a question that we get fairly often is, you know, what are our trucks? Um, what can we put on the drives? What can we put on, um, you know, the steer axles and, and whatnot? So if you're gonna break it down, our steel, with including the steer axle components and um, the weight of, and everything, all the specifications, you're looking at about 13,200 for uh, the Decker trucks. Now we have some exceptions. Some of the exceptions run about, I think those are Volvos, they run about 20 or 12.5, um, but for most part, our Peterbilts are 13.2. Um, so that, and that's based off of um, the axle assembly, it's based off of tires, uh, springs, all, all of those components. So adding up, okay. And then you've got the, the little scaling modes here. Um, then you've got the, uh, what do I want to, what's the word I want? Um, basically a lot of mount for each one. There we go. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> the steers, you're going to put about 12,000 on the steers. 
for you know with with the refrigerated side. So about twelve thousand on the steers. The drives, uh, you again, you've got about thirty four thousand on both the the trailer drives and um, or the trailers and the the drive tires, the tractor and trailer. Each are going to about have about thirty four thousand. And then the gross weight obviously is eighty. Now for the flatbed, you've got twelve thousand, um, thirty four thousand on the drives, and then the trailer, uh, forty thousand. Okay, but not over twenty on each of the individual ones, of the individual steers. Okay. Good. So a little bit different with the flatbed, um, but make sure you do not slide or adjust on the scale. I mentioned earlier, go find a flat surface. Once you scale, if you're heavy, go come off of the scale, go make the adjustments, pull forward if you need to pull forward, back up if you need to back up, but do it off of the scale. Then get yourself in order, get back onto the scale, um, and reweigh for an accurate an accurate weight. Um, and always, always, always weigh your truck or your truck and trailer. Always weigh it. Do not just bypass it. Decker pays for the scales. We pay for the scale tickets. Go weigh your truck. That's like your, your ultimate insurance policy. So go weigh your truck and trailer. Uh, make sure that you're, you're under and then, and then move on. But if you avoid the scale, you're probably not going to avoid a ticket. So keep, go get the, the scale ticket, go get it, and then hang on to that sucker while you're under the load so that you've got that reassurance if need be. Okay, so again, you've got um, don't, no sliding or adjusting on the scale. So load the steer axle and the tandem trailer axles for the maximum, leaving some room for the fuel weight. So this is important because you're figuring about seven pounds per gallon of fuel. That's pretty normal. Um, or, well, it's right there. Easy calculation of it. And if you are running, if they're putting on, you know, pushing 45,000 or whatever um, for, if the customer's putting on a lot of weight on it for you, you need to make sure that you've got wiggle room for fuel. So if you are only half full and they just keep stacking it and they're trying to get up to that, that full 80 or whatever, the 46,000, make sure that you have enough fuel to get down the road. If you don't, obviously it's gonna cause a whole lot of problem. You're gonna to have to fuel more often. That's gonna cut into your clock, cut into your time, um, and you definitely don't wanna go heavy. So make sure you know where your fuel is, um, that you're, you're taking into those calculations at all times. And then of course, in the winter months, you're gonna to need to make, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got even more weight on, you know, obviously you don't want to go beyond the 34,000, but make sure that you you keep uh, maximize, I guess, on your uh, your drives for traction, so that you've got you can uh, get up those hills or get around. You know, you're you're not spinning out as much on on everything. So yep, winter leave leave the drives at 34,000. It trailers at 34,000, drives at 34,000, steers 12,000. And always, always, always on a flat pavement. So that's going to cut down on a lot. But those are questions that we get pretty often on um, this, on scaling, on how to scale. Um, and I think the biggest deal is trying to make those adjustments. How do I make those adjustments? If you're if you need to go down on weight, if you need to, you know, if you've got some wiggle room, and know where each state is. If you have any questions, you can get a hold of maintenance. You can get a hold of safety. And they can advise you on proper scaling of loads, how to make the adjustments and whatnot um, as well. So obviously we're available if you need us uh, for additional information on that. But um, that's for, for scaling and stuff. And I think you can actually, I'm gonna have to double check, but we have our new intranet. And if you can access our intranet, you'll be able to get a, a sweet little, I don't have it, but, let me see if I can find it here for you. But you can actually access um, our cheat sheet on how to scale loads, the step by step, and um, you can those out of. Bleh. Let's try again. There is a telephone, telephone list or whatever um, directory. That's the word I wanted. 
how come nobody helped me with that? <laughs> There's a telephone directory of uh, who to get a hold of, you know, if you're trying to get a hold of Tanner or, or um, anybody in training that can walk you through doing the proper uh, adjustments for the scale. There we go. We're, we're making it, barely, but we're making it. <laughs> That's on how to scale your load, but know the, um, know the heights and everything for uh, each state so that you've got all of the requirements for the state too. And I think you can get a printout of that uh, for the rear axles, um, state by state for the kingpins to rear axles, you know, California and whatnot, you're, you're looking at 40, 40 feet. So um, I think that's usually the smallest, it's the smallest that I know of, California, 40, 40, 41, 43. Uh, 41 is pretty darn common, but California is 40. And so that's, that's the one I, I give the most heads up to. And with, if you're figuring, uh, with our trucks, if you're figuring a full tank of fuel and you're going down the road and when you're, you know, you're kind of taking in those, those numbers that for calculation or whatever, again, it's about seven pounds per gallon and we've got about 200 gallons on, on the truck. So it's, it's a little over 1400 uh, for the additional weight for fuel. You always need to take that into consideration when you're getting loaded where your fuel gauge is so that you're not coming across heavy. And again, a reminder about the APU, the APU is an extra 400 pounds um, or you've got that exemption, that 400 pound exemption. Um, but again, you can get a printout of the kingpin measurements for the states. Uh, looks like I got a duplicate here. Um, if you have any questions on the where the kingpin settings requirements are. Um, yeah, so that's the scale in the load. How to scale the load, um, just a quick overview. How to scale the load, make sure that trailers are locked tra um, before you begin, lock the trailer brakes, and then get out, take a look, make sure everything's good, that you've got plenty of room and distance, release those slider pins, and then make those adjustments, about 250 to um, 300, uh, depending on what the load, the weight of the load is, but 250 to, to 300 for the, um, uh, for each little hole that you can put in and, and adjust the measurements. All right, cool. All right, so that is our um, how, to, how to scale and how to scale properly and some of the tips to scaling the loads. Winter is about to happen. I'm not, I shouldn't say that. It's fall, we know it's fall, but with fall, at least in the Montana area or in the Northwest, and I've already been seeing it a little bit in the Midwest too, you guys are getting a little bit of winter weather. We're so very, very lucky. Um, but that being said, that's going to cause more slips, more falls, more, you know, just it's causing, causing issues for some of us. So uh, I just want to remind you guys to make sure that you're constantly using your three points of contact uh, when you're getting in and out of the truck. You're holding on with both hands when you're backing down out of the truck, you're not making any jumps, you're not diving head first, no jumping out of the trailers, anything like that. Um, I mean, in, in all honesty, so many things can happen if you're, if you're just being reckless about it, which I know you're not necessarily meaning to be reckless, but getting out without taking the time and having the three points of contact, you can get your toe caught as you're jumping out you know, I mean, really, you can get your toe caught, you can lose a tooth, knock yourself out, uh, hit your chin. Uh, there's there's a lot of danger, so please be careful with that. Um, always making sure that you're taking slow steps as you're getting out of the truck, especially when it's slick. If it just recently rained and the temperature's low, you, you need to take your 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 time because you really just can't, um, you can't tell what it's gonna be like everywhere. So slow down, slower, smaller steps, um, and then of course give yourself a little bit more time getting to and from your destination so that you've got time for adverse weather as well. Brad says he can't wait for snow. I think you are one of very few that I've talked to here lately that says that, um, but I'm good. We already had our uh, foot and a half of snow here, and so it's gone. It, it only took a couple of days to, go, to be gone since the um, ground itself was warmer, uh, which I appreciate, but I'm supposed to get another bout today. Aren't I lucky? When you're not driving? Yeah, when I'm not driving and I've got my hot tea and a good book, then yeah, I don't mind snow while I'm looking out the window. 
<laughs> no, but be safe, please, please. If they're hazardous conditions, um, besides just the snow, if it's been raining and with the weather or with the, the leaves coming off the trees and, and you know, the fall, beautiful scenery in the fall, but yet those piles of leaves can be dangerous. They can be slick, especially if rain gets in it and then cooler temperatures coming around the corner and you never know what's underneath them for one and uh, really can, can get you, shift, shift you coming down the road. <laughs> Constitution could go bye-bye. <laughs> what are we talking about? What well, doesn't matter what type, I'm trying to read this, bear with me. Doesn't matter what type of vehicle you operate, entering and exiting the vehicle is more hazardous than walking on surfaces that are slippery. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We've got guys who are um, talking with Nathan last year, one of our recruiters, used to drive flatbed for us, um, just going to his pickup truck and uh, slipped and fell and, and ratting him out whether or not he knows it. But uh, it was just, you know, just getting out of the truck a little bit too fast and hit his head, knocked him out. You guys got to be careful. So I, I just ask that you please be careful, be safe. Uh, you've got loved ones that want to make sure that you're getting home safely or that you're leaving safely. Um, so, so take the time, slow down. Whether you're walking or driving, take the time. So lots of winter falls, slips, booms, all that extra stuff. Stay off your cell phone. Don't need any of the extra distractions. We've got plenty of distractions out there um, as it is. So we don't need an additional uh, distractions. Keep your hands free whenever possible when you're, when you're walking out there on the ice. Um, I'm talking about ice. I think it's way too early for me to talk about ice, but we just had it. So I don't dare not bring it up. Um, but for the most part, make sure that before you even leave, before you're getting out on the road, that you're um, taking all the precautions uh, with your maintenance. You're doing a very thorough, as always, doing a very thorough um, inspection of your truck, of all of the equipment that you have so that you're, um, you know, your pre-trip is thorough and you're, you're out on the road and feeling safe about it, okay? Um, best you can do. Uh, Patrick says, always check your bunk heaters. Make sure that they're working and not obstructed. Oh, great advice, you know, because we've got those suckers tucked away. We probably haven't been using them for a while. So make sure that they're open, they're free. Um, nothing's getting in the way from them. We don't need anything burning. We don't need, um, you know, we don't need that congestion there. And don't wait until you need it to realize it's, it's inoperable. That's right. Definitely not good. Good job. Bring on the cold. You just like the cold because you get some... Uh, you get it to go in some beautiful areas and <laughs> all that good stuff, right? That's what I'm saying. I think you like cooler temperatures. That's what, because those are the pictures that I see. If Patrick are, are in higher elevations and maybe that's just because that's where it's prettier, right? <laughs> okay, so that brings me to our, what a great transition, Patrick. I, I appreciate that. That brings me to our newest game that's going on right now. As of yesterday, we are talking about our calendar contest. You can't even read this, it's so small. There we go. There, now you can see it. Yes, no, maybe so. There, okay. So this is our 2020 calendar. This is our photo contest. Um, I am super excited about this. We've had a couple of requests. Um, haven't had the, the photo contest for a while. A long time, actually. I don't know if we, we've had it since I've been here, and I've been here since 2010. And this is going to give you an opportunity to get some of those beautiful photos that you have provided to us, you know, shared with us on Facebook or you know, text some of your fleet managers or your recruiters and just rubbing it in our face that we're sitting here looking at a computer and you have the views of a lifetime. And I, I absolutely love it. I would love for you to continue to share those, but I also would like you to submit those. So marketing at deckermail.com. That's where you're submitting it. Hey, Patrick, I did submit yours to marketing at deckermail. Uh, I think if you already got my Facebook message, uh, I did send those over. Uh, thank you for sharing those, by the way. But I sent those over, and uh, they are entered for, or entered to win for the contest as well. So what we're doing is you can submit as many as you want. Actually, we love it if you just 
sent a whole bunch of them to us. What we're looking for is a scenic pictures. So not necessarily selfies. And I know we love selfies because we do them. We're always asking for selfies for all of our other contests, it seems like. But for this one, we just want the landscape and um, the truck. So of course we gotta have our Decker truck in it. I don't care if it's a new picture. I don't care if it's an old picture. I mean, it can be from 1950s. If you were with the company back in 1950 and you have the beautiful truck, um, and actually if, you, if uh, your father or mother or brother or sister or whoever was driving for us back then and you have a beautiful picture of the truck and, and landscape, share those. I'm, I'm not kidding when I say submit those. We'd love a variation of not only the time frame, uh, the time of year, but also the the time here at Decker. So we've been around for, well, officially I think it was 1930. Um, 31 is, is what originally we were told, but I think it actually goes back a little bit further. So if you've got any new or old pictures that are you would just love to share, submit those to marketing at Decker Mail. We'll start announcing some of those prizes as they come about, but we will definitely reward you for your submissions. Um, but send them in. What we're going to do is we need them by October 25th. So I'm not giving you a whole lot of time. So if you have a whole, if you've got pictures, you start diving into those suckers, get some family members to help, sift through those pictures, find some good ones and send them out to us. Um, marketing at deckermail.com. And you can submit, I mean, we don't, we only picking 12, of course, because calendar year, it's only 12 months. <laughs> So we're only picking 12, but that doesn't mean you only need to submit 12. It doesn't mean you, you know, you can submit one, you could submit 40, but bring them in. Let's see what you got. Um, we'd love to be posting them as we're, as we're getting them and we'll be sharing them on our Facebook page as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm not able to tag everybody when I post. So I do, I would like to, but it doesn't allow me to do it because it's a, a company and so it doesn't with the friend tagging, I don't know. Doesn't allow me to do it. So if you see a picture that you posted, tag yourself in it so that friends and family can see it as well. But uh, yeah, I, I love to see the pictures. I've seen some, the most, some of the most amazing um, sunsets, sunrises. I've seen, I love, personally, I love the mountain pictures because, you know, there's a reason we live here. And uh, I just, just keep them coming, you guys. They, they're gorgeous and, and uh, we'd love to be able to share them with everybody. But this is our contest. So it's um, our 2020 calendar photo contest. It does go to, I should probably share that with you. Um, it does go through the 25th of October because if we don't get it by the 25th, we're not gonna be able to get those out in time for the new year. So we need to get all of the submissions in by October 25th. We'll feature um, obviously one photo per month and we don't want any selfies. We just want the landscape and the, the truck itself. Um, we do appreciate the selfies and you're always welcome to share those on our Facebook page. We love them. But uh, for this contest, no selfies. But again, uh, I still like to feature them. I'm gonna post, Pat, Patrick, I'm gonna be posting uh, the one, the selfie that you uh, sent me yesterday um, just it's gorgeous. It's absolutely a, a gorgeous picture. So I'm going to be posting that here too if, in a few minutes. If you don't see it, ask me why not, because probably got sidetracked. Squirrel. <laughs> All right. Texas is warm. Yeah. Patrick, I hear you. I'm sure it is warm this time of year. I probably wouldn't mind being in that though. Not this time of year. Nope. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Well, I do want to give you a little bit of a preview on one of the positions that we've got available here at Decker is our over the road or a more Midwest guaranteed pay. This is our Midwest guaranteed pay, our refrigerated division. Zach is our driver manager or fleet manager for this position. And he's telling me he's got some great uh, opportunities for this. Um, he's got a lot of, uh, he said a lot of positions available that uh, freight wise, you know, so he's got plenty of freight, especially in the Kansas City area. Uh, he was saying that that's where they're, they're probably overloaded freight wise and they want to make sure that they get even more uh, freight in there. So, uh, or even more drivers out of there before the freight that's in there. 
Does that make sense? All right, twelve fifty a week. That's what it is. Let's go to that. <laughs> twelve fifty a week is what you get paid. You get home weekly, um, and it's guaranteed pay. So every week, so you you do need to make sure that you get your paperwork in. No driver service failures. Um, you know, no no late loads or anything like that. Um, be available for dispatch and. What am I missing? Be available for dispatch. Oh, no driver service. Get your paperwork in. Yep, I think I got it all. So there we go. Um, Brad, what's the link to send the pictures? Marketing at deckermail.com. Here we go. Marketing at deckermail.com. Also, Brad, if you want, you can just send them over Facebook if that's easier for some of you guys. And then I will get them to, I will make those submissions. But I do need to know what or who it is. So, you know, name. And if you, you know, obviously if you are submitting through Facebook, I'm going to have your name, but some of you guys have, um, irregular names on Facebook. <laughs> like, I don't know who you are. Um, so if, if you have a name other than your legal name on Facebook, please put your name or if you're a family, family member or whatever of, of one of our, uh, professional drivers and you're submitting on behalf of them, put uh, the driver's name. And then also please put where it was taken at and when, you know, it doesn't have to be the exact date, but you know, June of 2018 or uh, August of this year or something like that. And then where that picture was at so that we can all put that in there. And then of course, all of our submissions are going to have courtesy of whoever submitted that picture. So, um, Hey mudflap still there. Oh, nice and cool in Tennessee. I'm sure. I'm sure. Zach is awesome. You think so? I'm not going to tell him that, you know, I don't want him thinking he's doing a good job. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I do think he does a great job. Uh, and I will share that with him. So it's good. Good to hear. Thank you. But uh, marketing at deckermail.com. So I got sidetracked. What was I saying before that? I don't remember. Oh, the, I was talking about the guaranteed pay. Um, the guaranteed pay, the 1250 uh, get your paperwork in um, the Kansas City and the Fort Dodge, Iowa area. That's where we're, we have a lot of freight. We could definitely use some of our professional drivers out of those areas. So um, we do have, again, talking to Zach, we do have um, some of the, uh, the bonuses. You get an extra four cents a mile for our bonuses. Uh, you, you can get some of those. It is harder to get the bonuses in the guaranteed pay division just because a lot of them are shorter runs. However, talking to Zach, he did say that it is very common to get over and beyond the 1250 week because you've got, if you, the miles that you're running and whatever you're getting paid per mile, which is going to be anywhere from 40 to 50 cents a mile in the, well, it could be more than that actually, but starting it could be anywhere from 40 to 50 cents a mile in the, the refrigerated division for the Midwest. That, um, that times the number of miles that you ran could definitely exceed that 1250. And he said the, the majority of his guys are actually doing that. They're exceeding that 1250. So the pay per mile is 40, yeah, 40 to 50 cents a mile, 10 cents of that's per diem. You do get a penny raise after 90 days and a penny raise every year on your anniversary. It is capping out at 54, but that pay is really just the fallback if you didn't meet the requirements for the guaranteed pay, so maybe you weren't on, if you didn't have an, a load on time or you didn't get your paperwork in, um, you know, if you had a driver service failure or whatever, um, or if you weren't available for dispatch. So if, if you didn't meet the requirements for the guaranteed pay, then it would revert back to the pay per mile. However, it would also revert forward in this case <laughs> to the pay per mile if you exceeded the number of miles it would take to get that 1250, because we're going to get you the better of the two. So if you ran, you know, the number of miles you ran times, say you're making the 50 cents a mile, exceeded that 1250, don't make me do the math, then you'll get the better of the two in that case, right? Cool. So we also have uh, our Midwest flatbed that's guaranteed as well. And that one is 1350 a week. It is a lot more confined area. Oh, I should back up. So our, for our Midwest refrigerated, I mentioned that Kansas City is really busy. Uh, Fort Dodge is really busy, but if you live anywhere from Albert Lee, Minnesota to uh, Chicago along I-90 or from Omaha, Nebraska to Chicago on I-80, anywhere along that route, you're, you're going to be within the hiring area for uh, the Midwest guaranteed pay as well, as well as Kansas City or Fort Dodge. So now with the Midwest guaranteed pay for the flatbed division, which is $13.50 a week, you ne need to live anywhere from Mason City. Um, Iowa to Fort Dodge, Iowa, 
to Chicago, up to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, back down to the Mason City along that route. That's the 1350 week for flatbed. It's going to get you home weekly as well. Um, same requirements for getting your paperwork in and, and whatnot. Um, you can still make additional amount on the uh, on your weekly basis. You know, over and beyond that 1350. Um, however, for the experience, we do require at least three months of over the road tractor trailer experience before you can run for that Midwest flatbed division whether it's a guaranteed pay or just Midwest flatbed, has to be at least three months of experience. Where the refrigerated, we can train you. If you are a recent graduate of a PTDI certified school or have a minimum of one month of over the road experience, we can train you for the, the refrigerated position where with flatbed, we'll train in flatbed, but we require the experience first, uh, experience tractor trailer. And for over the road flatbed, which is actually based out of Bessemer, Alabama, we require a full six months of over the road tractor trailer experience. Again, it doesn't have to be flatbed because we'll train in that, but it does need to be experience. So we've got options. If you're wondering about where you live and what's available for where you're at, that's when you're gonna need to give us a call. Get a hold of one of the recruiters, 888-668-0698. Trying to remember where my, my phone number is here. Um, I think it's right here, right? There we go. This one. That one right there. <laughs> you can also go to drivedecker.com and fill out an application and uh, we, we can get back to you as soon as uh, we have that as well. Um, what else? What else was I going to say? Uh, with the over the road flatbed, well any of the flatbed divisions, the pay is going to be um, between 50 or excuse me 47 and 54 cents a mile. Uh, again, based off of experience, so 47 to 54 cents a mile for that division. Um, for any of the, the flatbed divisions, actually. And now our over-the-road refrigerated based out of Missoula, Montana. Um, uh, there, By the way, you'll get some really nice pictures up there. Uh, <laughs> that is going to get you anywhere from 38 to 48 cents a mile to start with. You still get a penny raise after 90 days, a penny raise every year on your anniversary. The cap for that division is 52 cents a mile. So a lot longer length of haul in that division um, compared to the Midwest division. So it's about twice as much as the Midwest for the length of haul. Um, you're looking at 1100 versus four to 600 in that division, in the Midwest division. Um, however, the miles will add up in either one. We'll get you good miles in, in each and both of them. All of them, all of the above, right? Any questions on what we've got available going on here at Decker right now? New, new? What time is it? Am I keeping you guys? Oh, I still have time. <laughs> so if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask away. Uh, we'll be answering them again next week. Monday at 4 p.m. Central, we have our Facebook Live. We'll be kicking off and, and answering questions right there for you. And then every Tuesday here on our Facebook channel, we of course have our, or Tuesday on our YouTube channel. Nobody corrected me fast enough, but I got it. On our YouTube channel, we have our live event at uh, 11 o'clock Mountain Time and noon Central. So join us every Monday and Tuesday on the on the respective channels. Make sure that you're subscribing and clicking the little bell on our YouTube so that you don't miss any of our, our live events or any of our new positions that we've got coming up and available um, or any of the other videos that might be coming out. And some of we've got training videos that will be coming out as well. Feel free to follow along. And again, for those submissions, whether it's the tarping tool contest or it's the uh, photo contest for our um, calendar, get those to marketing at deckermail.com. If you're not getting a response on that, because you will get a response from Jessica, uh, Michelle, she's fantastic at responding to the emails as soon as she's getting them and, and letting you know. If we didn't receive it, you won't get an email from her in return. So if that's the case, send it to me on Facebook so that I can get that submitted for you. But either way, we want to see these submissions. Awesome. Awesome possum. Okay. Make sure one more time as a reminder, if you have questions on how to scale that you're first off, you're scaling every load, you're scaling every load, use your way my truck app um, so that you're not, uh, you're not taking the chance or not using the insurance that you have right there in the palm of your hand, which is the way my scale app to, to keep you to keep you out of trouble. 
So always lock the trailer brakes before you even start to get out and look. Make sure you've got plenty of distance. Release those slider pins and um, of course, you know, make the adjustments and then scale again. If you need to make adjustments again, scale again. Do not slide or adjust on the scale. Get off, use a flat surface like I said, but get off of it completely and then come back on before you do it. Um, load the steering axle and the tandem trailer axles to the max, leaving room for the fuel weight because that's, that's important. And remember, steers, you're looking at 12,000 on the steers. Um, on the drives, you're looking at 34,000. And then um, for flatbed, or for refrigerated, excuse me, 34,000 on the trailers and, and trailers, trailer, there we go. Uh, winter months, try and make sure that you're going as heavy as possible on the drives so that you've got that, that steer, um, that traction, I guess, for the, the tires. Um, so you're not spinning out if you're going up the hill, if you're, you know, if you're not on the flat surface. So whether or not you're, when you're going down the road in general. So that's just, just evening out the weight a bit. All right, I will let you go. I will release you out into whatever you had planned for today. But as always, join us next week for our live events. Hope you guys keep it safe. We've got some weather coming in my direction up here in the Northwest. I don't know. Uh, keep an eye out for your, your local weather. Uh, if you have the Epic View, the TV, satellite TV that we've got in our trucks, make sure that you are scanning for local channels so that you've got weather. Of course, we've got the XM as well that you can keep track and, and have the weather updates um, on there also. But Okay, I'm gonna let you be. You guys, thank you so much for joining in with me today and uh, I look forward to some of those submissions and um, just be safe. Thanks again, you guys. Take care. <laughs>